Welcome to the celebration of the fourth Sunday of Advent at All Saints Parish. As you watch this recorded Mass, we encourage you to participate as fully as possible, to kneel if you're able, to stand where appropriate, and certainly to fully acclaim the responses. We also encourage you to light a candle in the space where you're watching this recorded Mass to remind ourselves that we are all called to be the light of Christ for each other. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to our recorded Mass here at All Saints Parish. It's good to have you with us again. Our musicians this morning are Jeremy Aldridge and Josh Reedford. Our reader, our lector, is Sister Joanne Marlowe. And uh, Mike Wathen is our cameraman, and John Kern is providing technical assistance. And Amy Eager and Peggy Epley will put all this together so that you can view it whenever and wherever. So thank you all for your service to us today. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today the Lord focuses in the scripture readings on the small things, the small people, the small places that God works through. Let's take a moment to reflect as God's small people how God is working through us. Lord God, Sometimes we are open to your workings within us and through us. Sometimes we're not. And so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, pour forth your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may, by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, <clears throat> who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, 
I would ask that you open your Bibles to the book of the prophet Micah. We're looking at Micah chapter 5, beginning with verse 2. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. The Lord says to his people, You, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Chapter 10, beginning with verse 5. The letter to the Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 5. When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings 
you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me. When he said above, You have never desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings, and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sacrificed and sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, beginning with verse 39. The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verse 39. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary set out in haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed in a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me? that the mother of my Lord comes to me. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we reflect upon how God works through little things, little people, little places. We start with a reading from the prophet Micah. Micah was known as one of the minor prophets. Micah was one of the little prophets that God worked through. And Micah is expressing God's anger because things are not going well in the kingdom of Judah because the rich are taking the fields and the homes of the poor. The priests and the prophets are dishonest and take bribes. And the poor are getting poorer and the rich are getting richer. Does that sound familiar? That's the way it was. But Micah promises a Savior. 
And he says it's going to come from this little town called Bethlehem. I'm sure we would never have heard of Bethlehem had it not been for what happened there when Jesus was born. Bethlehem was a nowhere, but God worked and came to send his son through Bethlehem. In the second reading, things are rather mystical and complex, but the idea is that God does not concern so much about sacrifices in a temple. He takes his worship out into the streets where the people are, the little people that God's going to work through. And in the gospel, we see the visitation, as we name it, when Mary goes to greet her cousin Elizabeth. And they both were pregnant with the hope of the world. God works through little people. As you probably know, women in Old Testament times and in New Testament times were next to nothing. They were important only that they were able to bear children and raise them, take care of the household, prepare the food, do whatever. But if they went outside, they never could go alone. They had to be in the company of a man who would protect and defend them and watch them. And so theirs was a rough life. Hopefully things have gotten a bit better, but not perfect. But they were the little people, the little people that God worked through, like Mary. We would never have heard of Mary had it not been for what was happening to her now in this reading and in the readings to follow because she was to be the mother of Jesus, the Savior. She went back to her little nothing town of Nazareth, eventually went down to a little town called Bethlehem where Jesus was born, a little baby. What could be more vulnerable, powerless than a baby? more dependent. The fact that our God took flesh not as a mighty warrior, not as the emperor of Rome, but as a little baby in an unknown place to unknown parents became an unknown child. Until he grew, he was pretty well unknown until he reached about the age 30 when he began to proclaim the message of God. This unknown person who raised eyebrows and the powerful people said, who is this? And what does he want and what is he doing? Small, little people are used by God to become great because it's God who works through them. Let me tell you about another little person. Ray Moeller, Jr., was four years old when he woke up one morning with a terrible pain in his hip and so bad that his parents took him to the hospital where he was diagnosed with a rare but treatable problem. And within eight hours, he was released. But he met many other children while he was there. He was an outgoing kid and he got to know a bunch of people. When he got home, he continued to think about them and thought that a lot of those kids are going to stay there for days, weeks, maybe months. And it's a lonely place being away from home, suffering in a strange environment. And so Ray decided that he would give half of his Christmas money and half of his birthday money to those kids to buy toys and gifts, whatever would help them in their loneliness. A couple of years later, when Ray was six, his parents formed a foundation to help children in the hospital. And at last count, they had given over 500,000 gifts 
to the little people from the little person called Ray. So it's the little people who God works through most of all, not the important people, not the rich people, the little people, the unknown people, the insignificant people like you and me. Now, hopefully, you will get a special chance to express your views at the upcoming synod. A synod is a strange word for us Americans. It's S-Y-N-O-D. We've had one here before in the time of Bishop Gettelfinger, but it's been a good while. And Pope Francis has said that there should be a synod in every diocese in the world. And so we're going to participate in that. And we're going to have one in our parish, and we're going to join together with Resurrection and have a synod where people will listen. The directions for the synod say that the bishop's main job is to listen. My main job will be to listen, to hear what you have to say. Ours will be in February the 23rd. I'm not sure of the location yet, but that will become clear as we go along. But we ask you to be thinking. We will be asked, how has the church helped you grow? But on the other side of that is, how has the church hurt you? Because I suspect the church has probably done both. This will not be a time to come up with solutions. It will simply be a listening session. And this will be passed on to the bishops of the country. And finally, to the Pope and to the bishops he collects with him in a synod in Rome in the year 2023. So you might be thinking about that and ask how God can work through you, through your voice, to show what's important and how the church can be better. God wants to work through you and me and all his people, the little ones. So it's time to open our hearts and tell God that we're not sure we're ready, but we're willing to let him work. Let's take a moment to reflect on whether we can tell God that we are willing to open our hearts to him. We believe that God often works to the little people in this world. Let's profess that faith together using the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now let us offer our prayers to the Lord. Sharpen our eyes of faith, loving God, to see the movement of your Holy Spirit in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Give us the courage and the will to respond to your invitations of greater love and life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all recovering from the loss of loved ones and their homes by the recent tornadoes, grant them the inner strength to rebuild their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in desperation from poverty and oppression, instill in them the hope to persevere. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this final week of Advent, Inspire us to take time to deepen ourselves spiritually for the celebration of Christmas. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who bear the cross of illness, strengthen them in faith and heal them in body. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and await the kingdom, especially Mary Lou Ulrich, and all whom we remember in love. May they eternally know the joy of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask that you hear these prayers and all the prayers in our hearts. Answer us as you see best. Help us accept your answer to our prayer. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we take some of the gifts that God has given us, just a teensy little bit, in the form of bread and wine, and offer them back to God as our way of saying thanks for all his gifts. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Lord accept accept the sacrifice at our hands hands for the the praise praise and glory of God's name, name, for our our good and the good of all God's holy church. May the Holy Spirit sanctify these gifts, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the bodies of all 
God's people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he arrived. It is by his gift that already we rejoice in the mystery of our nativity, of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glorious. Without end we acclaim... font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This is the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death, and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember Mary Lou Ulrich and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. And now let's offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. His name. 
He has mercy in every generation. He has revealed His power and His glory. He has cast down the mighty in their arrogance and has lifted up the meek and the lowly. He has come to help his servant Israel. He remembers his promise to our fathers and holy, holy, holy is his name and holy. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever nearer, we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. of you, oh, Lord.